guys sweeties how are you doing welcome to naya sim and thank you all so much for all the love and support you all shower me here with i am grateful and you all are super sweet so today we'll be talking something very important and it's about the jews all over again they are moving around going around looking for people singling people out and wanting to uh lobby them bribe them to run against rachidi talib uh, and some other black people not just only did they uh, 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 try to bribe like even black men they go around trying to bribe them why are they bribing people to support them why are they bribing people? and i am asking why is american government allowing something like this to happen i mean it's just very obvious they are not hiding it anymore going around to bribe people in order to remove the people that are speaking up against what they are doing why is this going on under joe biden i am asking this because they are not hiding it because they do not want i mean they feel like black people know a whole lot about them they feel like black people have been the ones speaking up against all the ills that has been happening why are they speaking up they are actually speaking up because they have experienced all these things that is going on in congo in sudan in palestine all the killings and all that they have done all this to african americans or black people in america and indigenous people so now they do not want them to have uh opinion they do not want them to to be in uh, in that seat so all they want right now is to clear them off by looking for a way to bright people let's get into this view i was offered 20 million dollars to withdraw from the senatorial race and run against my friend Rashida Tlaib. The pro-Israel lobby will go to any length to remove anybody from the U.S. Congress that has any opposition to their agenda and their total unequivocal support for Israel, good, bad, or indifferent. We need to make sure that money is not the main catalyst to get people elected because the pro-Israel lobby is only tool and what they use to threaten politicians is the amount of money they're going to spend against them or for them america let's come together and elect people who truly represent our values and not those of special interest apec keep your money in You guys remember how Hill Harper talked about how he was offered $20 million to drop out of his Senate seat and run against Rashida Tlaib for her House of Representatives seat by APEC, which is the Israeli lobbyist group. Well, guess what? They've offered the same $20 million to another person who also turned it down because as his, as he said, I cannot be bought. I want y'all to know whoever runs against Rashida Tlaib has been paid and bought for by APEC. So anybody who has taken that $20 million because two people in a row is crazy. Whoever runs against Rashida Tlaib has been paid and bought by the Israeli lobbyist group, APAC. The fact that they're able to manipulate the United States government like this is crazy. Every single person who has taken APAC money and J Street money is in the, in the pockets of the Israeli government. They control all of our senators. That's why I'm not a, there's only two senators that have called for a ceasefire after 50 days and 20,000 plus people killed. Only two senators have called for a, um, a ceasefire. Every other senator has, is in the pockets of the Israeli government and is paid for and bought for by the Israeli government through J Street and APAC. When you're voting this year, because every single House of Representatives seat is open for um, elections this year, when you're voting, look to see if those representatives took APAC money or J Street money. Those are the two Israeli lobbyist groups. Withdraw from the senatorial race and run against my friend Rashida. What do you think are the chances that they've actually always been spending money to try and take Rashida out? Because she's Palestinian. And her having any power and say in that place would be bad for Israel. So I actually think that probably the reason she's the only Palestinian person in Congress is because any Palestinian who tries to run, no matter what they run on, no matter who they are, Israel is investing money to defeat them because they're Palestinian. Straight facts, no chaser. So I saw my sister Tabitha and also my brother Thomas the Villain. They both were talking about APAC. 
and how Thomas was talking about vote blue no matter who, and my brother was heated, and understandably so. The fact that APAC is choosing like to decide upon who is going to run. They tried to get Hill Harper to run against Rashida Tlaib and offered him $20 million to do so. Now, because he's a rich man and has morals, he said, fuck no. But you got to ask yourself, how many people would have said yes that doesn't have Hill Harper money and doesn't have any kind of fucking morality? Ask yourself personally. Would you have taken the money? Many people, like myself and others, we don't have $20 million in the bank. And if all you got to do is vote for whatever the fuck that Israel wants, many of us would have took that cash and ran with it. Because in all honesty, that doesn't mean you're going to win. That means you're just going to run. And if I'm getting $20 million just to put my name out there, more than likely, most Americans would do that shit. Not because we have anything against Rashida Tlaib. It's just that we have everything for money. That's the American way. Now, I myself wouldn't have took it, but I totally understand people who would have. But my question to anybody that's going through this whole situation is, would you vote for that person, even if they did it? I say, fuck no. Why? Because that person's bought by Israel, 100%, which means that person would have to do whatever Israel wanted them to do. Vote that direction, create a bill that benefits Israel, say no when things don't benefit Israel, all kinds of things of that nature, even if they don't believe in it, even if their constituents don't believe in it. And the thing that's so fucked up about it is not just Israel. Citizens United is Russia. So when you look at it, every country, every political group in this country has a PAC or super PAC, both and sometimes way more. So ask yourself, what's the benefit of a PAC or super PAC? It's to influence policy, the government, to benefit whatever your particular mission is. So Israel has one, Russia has one, China has one, and they have more than one. But each one of these particular countries are influencing our elections and our policies. So what's the solution? To me, we need to get rid of PACs and super PACs. This is insane, people. We as a people don't have control over our own country's leadership. They are placed in front of us via these super PACs and PACs have interests from other countries, not just America. So when other countries are putting our politicians into place, it's no wonder that you see all these people behind Israel. They've been terrorizing the shit out of Palestinians for decades. And these motherfuckers have been looking the other way. And you wonder why Americans who are level-headed are pissed at Israel for the shit that they've done and continue to do and via their pact pay off our politicians to go against what their own citizens and constituents want in this fucking country. Everybody in the world has seen now that Israel is the tyrant. They are the oppressor. And the world is tired of you motherfuckers oppressing people. We're tired of Americans oppressing people. We're tired of motherfucking other countries oppressing people. And the Congo oppressing people. We're fucking sick and tired of it. We don't want to see it anymore. This shit's been going on for fucking centuries. And all you guys do is keep reinventing the motherfucking wheel and creating terms that make it seem as though you're not doing oppression. You're not doing like racism. You're not doing genocide. You call this other shit, whatever it is, that seems more mild, which equals genocide, which equals racism, which equals oppression. But you just don't use those words anymore. Either way, Americans are sick of it. We're done with it. Because your lies for centuries are finally being exposed. The truth is bubbling up and it's pissing you the fuck off. Because it's messing with your money and your power and your control over the citizens. Citizens, I want y'all to know something. Ask yourself the question. How is it that these businesses and these PACs and so forth are spending so much money in these elections when they only can really donate as a business $5,000 for a candidate? That's the max. The citizens, individual donors, $2,900, that's a max. So with $5,000 being a max for businesses and $2,900 being a max for individual donors, how are they investing millions? Now, I understand people are saying like ad buys and they can't really be connected to the candidate personally. But here's the thing. You ever notice when you donate? This is a literal thing that happened to me years ago. I was giving money to the Democratic Party. They just called me up and they was like, hey, this is somebody from the Democratic Party, blah, 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 blah. We're trying to get this done. We need to get this path. We need your help. If you can donate $350 today, we'll be able to match it. So if I give you $350, you're going to give $700? So yeah, oh, that sounds pretty good. 
or you give the $350 thinking you did something great for your party. And then you find out now when I'm looking through this shit, all these years that I've been giving money and it's been matched, my money didn't fucking matter. You know why? Because who matched my money? You never really know. Think about that for a second. Who gave up $350? They always say another donor matches it. They never tell you who that donor is. That donor is a pack, super pack. They can give countless dollars away. They just can't be in touch with the actual candidate. So what do they do? They put a pile of money at these particular centers, get you to donate 350, thousand, match it with 350 or thousand. And then that money goes to the candidate. Now that pack can only donate $5,000 as a business, but then it can donate tens of millions through you. Filter it through you. So in all honesty, a super PAC and a PAC, they launder money through you. Exactly what they do. You give $350, they get $700. The candidate knows that APAC gave them that money. You, they don't know who the fuck you are. They don't give a fuck who you are. They realize they just got $28 million. How did they do it? It was laundered through APAC. They just sent the money alongside you and took all the credit. So when they're in there making their decisions, it's not based on what you wanted. It's based on what that pack or super pack wanted because they were the person who gave them the most money. You gave them 350. They gave them 350. They gave them 350 as individual donors. The pack gave them 28.5 million laundered to the individual donor. Makes you want to throw up, doesn't it? All they do is use your money as if you fucking matter. And then they go to the pack and they're beholden to them for matching your money plus giving their max of $5,000. Now, I looked everywhere I could to see if this shit was legal. I couldn't find it nowhere. I'm like, where'd this shit come from? Because this is in the article from the JewishCurrents.org saying that they gave money via individual donors, called it bundling. And I'm like, what? So the money I gave, they gave two shits about. They wanted it, but they were beholden to the pack that they bundled my money with. It gains the pack and super pack influence, decisions that I may not agree with, but I put my money alongside of theirs. And in so doing, I'm supporting the pack to do what the pack wants. And it may be totally against my own morality, my own choices, my own politics, my own policies that I want. I have no clue if my money has been matched by a racist organization that's fighting against everything I stand for and getting influence through the money that I donate. Now, isn't that a bitch? Don't believe me. Go look it up yourself. I've given you articles. Go read it. Learn and get at me. Because I speak facts. Straight facts. No chaser. Fuck your feelings. I was offered $20 million to withdraw from... It's textbook fucking election interference. It's election interference. Why isn't the Justice Department pursuing charges against APAC? Why isn't Congress banning them from influencing any further elections? Ask that fucking question. Good evening. You know, I really have been talking about Palestine a lot lately because my videos get taken down, okay? Um, not because I don't care, not because I don't have things to say. Um, I do want to talk about APAC. Uh, APAC is the pro-Israel pack that everybody's pissed off at right now because some people are just learning that, like, literally, like, almost everybody's asses in D.C. is owned by them. Okay, so I'm from Michigan, and Debbie Stabenow has been our state senator for years, and she is retiring. Um, so last week, Hill Harper, who is one of the candidates that's running to fill her position, he was offered $20 million by APAC. He was asked to step down from running for Senate and to mount a primary against Rashida Tlaib. He declined the offer, and he said that he would not be bought and he will not be bullied. Another candidate for that Michigan Senate seat, Nasser Bidon, said that he was approached by them with the same offer. Okay, so I'm going to quote, uh, they basically said that even though you're pro-Palestinian, they don't have a problem with that, uh, Badone said. They just want Rashida out. Okay, so APAC's on a mission right now. They're trying to get the squad out, you know, the four women in Congress, including Rashida and AOC. And APAC is not a force to be reckoned with. Let me tell you, I have a very personal experience with them. They had primaried out my congressman uh, last summer that I worked tirelessly on his campaign. And 
they spent $4 million to get rid of him because he was a very, very progressive Democrat. And um, the money was willingly taken by a female Democrat, um, even though knowing the uh, right-wing affiliation. Okay, so here's the deal. What APAC wants, APAC gets. This is from 2022. And it states that they have a 98% success rate winning their primaries. Okay, so I'm from Michigan and I'm supporting Hill Harper um, because the one hill that I die on politically is healthcare for all, like full stop. However, he also wants to get rid of the filibuster. He's pro-union, he's a union leader, and he wants campaign reform. And most importantly, he can't be bought. So he basically like checks all the boxes for me. We just need to get all the PAC money out of politics right now and nothing's gonna happen anytime soon with Citizens United. So if you're from Michigan, check out Hill Harper and support him. If you're not from Michigan, support him. I support candidates from all over the country that are in need of support all the time um, because we need to keep seats, we need to add seats, and we don't need to be primarying out seats. And we especially need to get rid of these special interest PACs. Can we begin to discuss how APAC is assuredly threatening members of our government at this point, allegedly? Now, it's one thing to be bought and paid for by, like, some members of the Israeli government, it would seem. Wait, first, let's go into the amount of money that APAC is donating to our government. This is, what, $13 million, right? This is in 2022, and then you can see these other figures here. They're caking, they're guapping the girls off in every single party. I think they're, from my calculation, my understanding is four members that do not have support from APAC. Even the four is questionable. I think it only might be two. So this support finance uh, makes it obvious enough why people are taking the actions they're taking. But some of these people are not even up for re-election next year. Some of these people might have integrity and they might think, hey, maybe I might be in danger when I leave office. Yet they're still willing to vote this way. They also went as far as to embarrass themselves with this. Like you set up a measure saying, no, no, we're, they're, Israel's not racist. No, oh, no, we said it out loud. So it means it's not true. First of all, you don't decide what's racist. Like you just telling us something's not racist doesn't mean it's not. So why did you waste your time? Anyway, like I said, beyond these financial contributions, I actually talked about Nancy Pelosi running again. And I think that she is allegedly, again, part of a crime syndicate, a global crime syndicate, which is why she has to keep running. Because if you want to retrain an operative that's stuck inside the U.S. government, you're going to need about 10 years on that to get them where you need to be. But you have Nancy. And I feel like Joe Biden is the same kind of a principal. Why is he not retiring? He's falling apart. And also, like, does he have no dignity himself? I think he has a little bit. I feel like he's just genuinely being threatened and he can't leave. And it's giving me the same feeling with all these people in the government. Because um, again, it wouldn't be me. Even if I had taken money from you, you'd have to threaten me with physical violence for me to like vote the way that these people are voting. One person voted no on that resolution, the last one I showed you, saying that no, Israel is not racist. So is that some kind of like weird scammy language? Because maybe they're not racist, but they're certainly um, against other religions, it would seem. But yeah, I'm going to venture a guess. You know when Donald Trump was having that moment where everyone was like, the Russia is going to release his P tapes, the compromat they had allegedly. This is a very common practice amongst uh, international spies. Uh, Jeffrey Epstein had an Israeli passport and I believe he was an asset of them. Mossad? That's my belief personally. You can believe what you want. But if it were me and I were APAC, to assure that you will fall in line, I will assuredly have something on you that you don't want everyone to see. I actually thought it was funny with the Trump thing. Uh, if a bunch of people, if I was running for the presidency and they were like, we have a bunch of videos of escorts peeing on you, I'd be like, okay, show them. I don't care. <laughs> Let's go. You have to imagine what they know about these people for them to be not willing to come forward. Um, even if that's not the case, if they're not even sinister on their own, because we know there's a lot of uh, creepy child predators in our government. Still sitting in his seat, but you know, Rashida Tlaib was censured. So make that make sense. But threatening their families, etc. Like, are they threatening these people? I feel like they have to be for this level of unanimous action to be happening. So if anyone wants to talk about this delightful culinary recipe with me, I would love to discuss this further. That was giving it a little time. I was like, oh, they'll figure it out soon. But they seem to not be able to figure out, not willing to figure it out. And that implicates to me that they are being threatened behind the scenes. Yeah, you're going to risk it all to say like Israel is not in the wrong. And I say risk it all. Yeah, what's missing from that? What are you not willing to risk? That's what they have on you. Right? Does anyone else? I don't see this any other way. I'm kind of asking you, but I'm also saying... So this is all I got from this video, I and I really do not know what it's going on as it stands, because these people are going, like, you know, they are ready to pay anything they can to make sure that uh, they do not see some certain people in Congress, because this is just not only affecting uh, Rashidi Talib and other black people, too. They go around bribing people to run against her. So that shows, but then I want to ask this before I continue. 
wait, is America now being run by the Jews or the Israel, Israel Israelis government? Because I don't understand this. How they have so much, why, why do they have so much power in what is going on in America? Because like, I don't see how they, all of a sudden, they started interfering in what is going on in Congress. Looking for people to bribe against a certain set of people, right? And now they are doing it individual, individually right now, trying to like remove some certain people, bribing people to get rid of people. Why are they buying people over to be in Congress? Why do you have to pay a lot of money also to for people to be in Congress? Why do you have to bribe people? Why do you have to remove people? I mean, this thing doesn't really make a lot of sense because like, you know, it already shows how evil you people are because if you are not evil you won't look for a way to pay money sincerely speaking you won't look for a way to pay money to remove people from congress because they are pro-palestine or because they are against what is going on they are not they are not saying anything bad they are just being truthful with what you people are doing in palestine and other places because the same thing is also happening in Congo and Sudan. You people already like you people have decided that all you want to do is make people's life difficult because people in Congo right now are going through hell. People in Sudan are going through hell and Palestine are going through hell because of what you people are doing. Now, what you all are fighting right now is all you can do to remove the people that are speaking the truth remove all the black people that are in power then to put your own people why is u.s government allowing something like this to happen because now all they want to do is share the park what if they meet somebody that just won the park also i appreciate these people like you know coming out to review their secret because this is like a great exposure to what they are doing now we know that what the, anybody you see that takes over uh rashidi talib uh oman and some other black people that are in that congress you all we are supposed to know that they were lobbied they were paid to campaign against them and also we really have to look very closely to what is going on so that it, Paraventure, there is need to uh, uh, put them all back in power. We all can come out and do what we are supposed to do because these people are great reflection of what leadership should be because they are setting the standard. I love the fact that they are setting the standard and they are speaking up no matter what is going on. That is what we call integrity. My sincerely speaking, I am really sick and tired of waking up to the Jews and Israel, all of them uh, looking for a way to oppress black people because that is what they know how to do best. And they are so mad. Why are they so mad that black people are speaking up? Other people are also speaking up because, it, I mean, they have done the same thing that they are doing all over to African Americans or to black people and the indigenous people. This is what they have done to them. See you all in my next video. Bye for now.